Hi everyone! This first book I chose on this cold winter night is called Winter Days in the Big Woods. Once upon a time, a little girl named Laura lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little house made of logs. Look at those beautiful flowers she's gathering. Yeah. Laura lived in the little house with her pa, her ma, her big sister Mary, her baby sister Carrie, and their good old bulldog Jack. Look, she's out playing fetch with him. Yeah. Oh, I love where they live. It's beautiful. Winter was coming to the big woods. Soon the little house would be covered with snow. Pa went hunting every day so that they would have meat during the long, cold winter. See all the leaves starting to fall? Yeah. Ma, Laura, and Mary gathered potatoes and carrots, beets and turnips, cabbages and onions, and peppers and pumpkins from the garden next to the little house. By the time winter came, the little house was full of good things to eat. Laura and Mary thought the attic was a lovely place to play. They played house by using the round orange pumpkins as tables and chairs, and everything was snug and cozy. Soon the first snow came, and it was very cold. In the mornings, the windows were covered with beautiful frost pictures, of trees and flowers and fairies. Ma said that Jack Frost came in the night and made the pictures while everyone was asleep. Laura and Mary were allowed to use Ma's thimble to make pretty patterns of circles in the frost. See that metal thing on her fingertip? That's called a thimble. You use that in sewing so that you don't, don't prick your finger with a sharp needle. In the mornings, Laura and Mary helped Ma wash the dishes and make the beds. After this was done, Ma began the work that belonged to that day. Each day had its own proper work. Ma would say, wash on Monday, iron on Tuesday, mend on Wednesday, churn on Thursday, clean on Friday, bake on Saturday, and rest on Sunday. See the churn on Thursday? Churn means when they make butter. Because they, they couldn't buy butter in the store. They had to make their own butter. That's what churn means. See? That's what they're doing there. Laura liked the churning and baking days best of all. Ma had to churn the cream for a long time until it turned into butter. Mary could sometimes churn while Ma rested, but Laura was too little. I think that'd be fun. On Saturdays, when Ma made the bread, Laura and Mary each had a little piece of dough to make into a little loaf. Ma even gave them a bit of cookie dough to make little cookies. After the day's work was done, Ma would sometimes cut out paper dolls for Laura and Mary. She drew their faces on with a pencil and cut dresses, hats, and ribbons out of colored paper so that Mary and Laura could dress their dolls beautifully. But the best time of all was at night when Pa came home. He would throw off his fur cap and coat and mittens and call, Where's my little half pint of sweet cider half drunk up? That was Laura because she was so small. Sometimes Pa would take down his fiddle and sing. Pa would keep time with his foot. Laura and Mary would clap their hands to the music when he sang, Yankee Doodle went to town. He wore his striped trousies. He swore he couldn't see the town. There was so many houses. Other times, Pa would tell stories. When Laura and Mary begged him for a story, he would take them on his knees and tickle their faces with his long whiskers until they laughed out loud. His eyes were blue and merry. Outside it was cold and snowy, but the little log cabin was snug and cozy. 
Papa, Ma, Laura, Mary, and baby Carrie were comfortable and happy in their little house in the big woods. And the other story I chose for tonight is called Snow Friends. Look at those birch trees. Aren't they yeah. pretty? Yeah. Little Bear woke early from his deep winter sleep. As he yawned and stretched, he looked out of the bear cave and gasped. The world was covered with a thick white blanket, sparkling in the sunshine. Ooh, he cried, snow, and he raced out to play. Little Bear went rolling and skidding down the hillside, racing faster and faster. He rushed through the trees, shaking the branches to make tiny white snowstorms. He stomped and stamped in the crunchy snow, making trails of footprints that circled and twirled. Little Bear climbed up a hill and gazed out at the whiteness. The mountains and forests were still and silent. He looked around for someone to play with, but he couldn't see anyone anywhere. Hello, he cried. Hello, came back his echo, but no one else replied. Little Bear was all alone. Oh dear, he sighed. If only I had someone to play with. And he fell with a plop into a big snowdrift. Suddenly, Little Bear had an idea. He began to make a snowball bigger and bigger. If I make a really big snowball, he thought, I could build a snowman, and then I would have someone to play with. So he rolled and rolled a shiny round snowman body until it was nearly as big as he was. Well, look, there's an otter. Yeah. He might play with him. Yeah. Little Bear was so busy with his snowball that he didn't see Otter swimming across the lake. Hello, cried Otter, racing up. What are you doing? I'm making a snowman, the best snowman ever, replied Little Bear. Wow, said Otter, that sounds fun. Can I help? That would be great, said Little Bear. And they pushed and they puffed until they couldn't roll the snowball any further. Little Bear and Otter stopped for a rest, but just then they heard a muffled voice. Hey, what's going on? It cried. Everything's gone dark. Oh, my snowball's talking, squeaked Little Bear. No, laughed Otter. The noise is underneath. Quick. And together they pushed as hard as they could until the big snowball creaked away to one side. <clears throat> A rabbit popped up from its burrow. Who turned off the light, he said crossly. Sorry, said Little Bear. We're building the best snowman ever. And it got stuck on top of your burrow, giggled Otter. Funny snowman, said Rabbit laughing. It hasn't got a head. Well, we haven't made it yet, said Little Bear. You can help if you like. So Rabbit helped to make the snowman's head and gave him a big happy smile. Then Otter went back to the river for some sticks and Little Bear found a few nuts left in his winter store while Rabbit picked out the very best carrot from his larder. They built the snowman together with Otter's sticks for arms and the nuts from Little Bear's store for his eyes. Finally, Rabbit climbed onto Little Bear's shoulders and pushed the carrot nose in place. Otter laughed and cheered, Hooray! The best snowman ever was finished. That's a really cute snowman. Yeah. For the rest of the day, they played with the snowman in the snow. They played hide and seek and chase and had huge snowball fights that left them giggling and gasping for breath. At last, as the sky turned orange and the sun set, the three friends talked about what games they would play the next day. Let's go exploring, said Rabbit. What about the snowman, said Little Bear? We can't leave him all on his own. Well, let's build him a friend then, said Otter. Once again, they rolled and patted and shaped until they made a perfect little snowman. 
By the time they had finished, the stars were twinkling in the sky. Tired and happy, they crashed in a heap and watched with wonder as the snowman and his friend turned to silver in the moonlight. He's the bestest snowman in the world, whispered Little Bear. And he'll never be lonely now. He has a friend, said Otter. Yes, Rabbit smiled, just like us. That's a really pretty picture of the moon. That's the end. I'm glad you found friends to play with. It's our Bible study for tonight. Jesus grows up. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. He learned the old stories about Noah and Abraham and many others, just like you're learning. He learned about Moses and the laws God had given him. Love God most of all and love others as you love yourself. That was all written in the law, in the scroll. Mm -hmm. Every year, the people remembered the story of Moses and the great escape from Egypt. Egypt. They held a special festival called Passover. The best place to be at festival time was the big city of Jerusalem. When Jesus was 12, he went with Mary and Joseph and lots of people from Nazareth. The most important part of the festival took place in the temple. All around, wise teachers sat and talked about the old stories and the laws God had given Moses. After the festival, everyone from Nazareth set off for home. They had gone some way when Mary thought, Where is Jesus? I haven't seen him all day. No one had seen him. So Mary and Joseph rushed back to Jerusalem. At last they found Jesus. He was sitting with the wise teachers, talking about the old stories and the laws. Why are you here? asked Mary. We have been so worried about you. Why, said Jesus, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? Mary didn't really understand. She just wanted Jesus to be safe. Then Jesus went back home. He grew to be a man. He was a good son to his parents. He learned the kind of work that Joseph did. He was a carpenter. He yeah. built things out of wood. Then one day he went off to begin a new kind of work. He said goodbye. Yeah. Jesus became a wise teacher. He helped people understand the old stories and the laws. He wanted people to understand what God is like. He wanted people to know how much God loves them. Good night. Good night.